World War II was the deadliest military conflict in history. Between 70 to 85 million people perished, or about 3% of the 2.3 billion people on Earth in 1940. Deaths directly caused by the war are estimated at 50 to 56 million, with an additional estimated 19 to 28 million deaths from war-related disease and famine. Soldiers on the battlefield died of artillery fire, bombing, machine gun fire, and many other horrible reasons you can think of. But what about hand-to-hand -hand combat? It depends on what you call hand-to-hand. -hand. Hand-to-hand -hand in Hollywood is something akin to MMA fighting and that comes from somewhere in some screenwriter's head. In combat, hand-to-hand -hand usually entails rifles tipped with bayonets, sharpened entrenching tools used as crude chopping weapons, pistols, brass knuckles, and fighting knives. If it came down to the latter, it was indeed very close quarters. For a hand-to-hand -hand fight to occur, a few things have to take place. The parties involved have to close with one another. The attacker has to survive the gauntlet of artillery, mortars, machine guns, and small arms weapons in sufficient numbers to get in among the defenders. Once that happens, a hand-to-hand -hand fight ensues as the utility of long-distance weapons is nullified. The First World War is notorious for its huge death tolls on all sides of the warring nations and the horrendous conditions soldiers had to endure in the trenches on both the eastern and western fronts. Most battle casualties were caused by artillery, with many additional deaths caused by machine guns cutting down swaths of men as they charged across no man's land. It was rare that a force of soldiers actually got close enough to enemy trenches to engage in hand-to-hand -hand combat, but when this did happen, the close quarters fighting was intensely brutal, with men doing their best to kill each other with anything they could get their hands on, from standard-issue rifle bayonets to trench knives to improvised weapons like clubs and shovels. Also, during World War II, close quarter hand-to-hand -hand combat happened frequently, especially in urban and trench warfare. It was often brutal and gruesome, with soldiers using whatever weapons they had available, including bayonets, knives, and even their bare hands. Most of these instances occurred in the Pacific and Eastern fronts. Melee combat happened quite a lot on the Eastern Front at least in the period before 1943 when the Soviets were able to put a large number of automatic fire weapons into the hands of their soldiers. This was because by 1943, infantry firearms on the Eastern Front were still mostly World War I alike. That means most of the troops were still armed with bolt-action rifles. Although by the time of Operation Barbarossa, the German invasion of the USSR in June 1941, semi-automatic rifles like the SVT-40 were already in widespread use by the Red Army. The first months of the war were disastrous for the Soviet Union. They lost hundreds of thousands of semi-automatic rifles because of the rapid German advances. To make up for this, the production of the mosin nagant rifles was reintroduced. Also, submachine guns were rare. The Soviets only had 711 submachine guns for a whole division by July 1942, while a German squad had one SMG for every 10 men. So, if you walked into a house and looked at a soldier in front of you, he looked at you. You both immediately try to dart to cover, but also take a shot at one another. Now, you both have an empty cartridge loaded in your bolt-action rifle. You have a split second to determine if you should recycle a new round or run at this guy who's five feet in front of you. Given that, it was not surprising to find soldiers engaging in melee combat all the time, and anecdote records were many. In Svetlana Alexvik's book titled The Unwomanly Face of War, there was an excerpt of a female medic who followed the men as they charged into a German trench, and her job was to follow them as they clubbed, stabbed, and beat the enemy. During the defense of Brest Fortress in the first days of Operation Barbarossa, the Soviets were said to drive back the German attackers at bayonet point. However, the favorite weapon seemed to be the shovel. Perhaps it was because the shovel was shorter, easier to swing, and more compact in close quarters.
The Pacific, however, was another story. There were jungles, villages, and tunnels all over. Also, it needs to be pointed out that the Japanese took pride in using katanas and other traditional swords. The first big hand-to-hand -hand fight in the Pacific for American troops was on Edson's Ridge on Guadalcanal. A special attack force of Japanese troops moved from the southern shore of the island and tried to break through the marine lines in order to retake the landing field that had been captured on the first day of the U.S. landing. Japanese troops attacking at night were able to close with and nearly overran marine positions on the ridge but failed. They did, however, break through when small parties of Japanese troops got through the rear areas before being killed. This was one of the things that convinced the U.S. troopers and Marines that the Japanese soldier was suicidal. No wonder why that they came to this conclusion. To stage lone or small group infiltration of dug-in enemy positions had to indeed be lunatic. Yet they continued this practice throughout the war. On the ridge, there were instances of hand-to-hand -hand fighting. The methods of the Japanese primarily nighttime attacks and small party infiltration were such that many one-on-one hand-to-hand -on -one -hand fights ensued on nearly all the island campaigns. Many U.S. soldiers were bayoneted in their foxholes back then. Although hand-to-hand -hand fighting was accorded less importance in major militaries after World War II, insurgency conflicts such as the Vietnam War have prompted many armies to pay more attention to this form of combat. In modern warfare, close-quarter combat and melees are less common due to the increased use of technology such as drones, precision-guided munitions, and long-range weapons. However, it still occurs in certain situations, such as in urban environments or when special operations forces are conducting raids. Additionally, close-quarters combat training is still an important part of military training for most countries. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and share. Also, visit our second channel with military power comparisons. See you next time.